Hello and namaste, my beautiful friends. I'm Jill Loftus from New It Astrology. Welcome to your planetary energy forecast for the week of August the 12th, 2024. I am putting the astrological caution flag up from now through the end of the month because of multiple factors here, but particularly some tense aspects that we launched the week with. So the planet Mars, action, drive, will, achievement, war, right? Coming in contact with Jupiter. Jupiter, the planet of philosophy, of understanding, uh, both in the sign of Gemini. Now, remember, Jupiter is not in its favorite place to be. Jupiter is more worldly than this. <laughs> it's a little too local for Jupiter. And with Mars here, well, it adds definitely an argumentative edge. It also amplifies the reactions to thoughts, to communication, to expressions. So this could bring in a highly argumentative energy all by itself, but add in that it is in a difficult angle with the planet Saturn in the sign of Pisces. Now Saturn in Pisces is also not particularly strong. It can feel like there's this overarching coldness, limitation, rules you don't really understand, manipulation from behind the scenes when Saturn is in Pisces. And we've been experiencing this for, well, since March of 23. But now we have this clash between uh, expansive Jupiter and limiting Saturn. And then Mars there just throws a little bit of gasoline on this uh, situation. Now, that Martian energy, uh, you know, it really is, it can be an aggravator. But let's hope also that it just gives you the will and drive to move forward when you are shown the way. Difficult aspects help us to gain certain skills. And so I want you to embrace the challenges that arise over this time period. Try to achieve understanding. Try to not argue or, um, well, it's not necessarily don't argue, right? Um, you have to stand your ground, but there's this a concept about pouring wisdom onto fools. <laughs> um, and that sounds judgmental and harsh, but truly there's some people that you're never going to change their mind. And so the more you get agitated and argumentative and trying to get them to see your point of view when they are not quite there yet, it's not, it's not useful. Um, this is a time where meditation is going to be key, mantra, repetitive uh, movements of the mind in positive ways, really monitoring the, the people that you're hanging out with, your social structure, making sure that these are positive interactions and people that um, build you up and don't bring you down. This is something that's really important to pay attention to this week. If you know your chart, um, the, the connection of Jupiter and Mars is at 16 degrees, but we're looking at the whole, I would look at between 14 um, to 20 of the mutable signs as, as a area of, uh, of focus at this time. Now, um, I'm also looking at the possibility that this could bring issues surrounding water. With Saturn in a water sign, there have been a lot of issues related to water. I've noticed um, an uptick, unfortunately, in the news of drownings and things like that. So again, water, water's less forgiving right now, all right? So be really wise, be careful. This could also bring weather-related events. Now, we're noting on the 14th, Mercury's movement um, back in to Leo. And so this will be a little bit of a shift, right? We also have um, a, a, just more of a, a, a kind of a conflict vibe on the 14th because the moon will be in uh, uh, Sagittarius. So picking up some of the more negative angles there. And then um, I'm also watching this Mercury and Leo beginning to square uh, Uranus and Taurus again. You may be like, well, didn't we just have to deal with that a couple weeks ago? Yes, we did. But remember, Mercury is moving backwards. And so it's picking up that square again. So again, there's a, maybe a difficult conversation that needs to be had or more information flows through that you're like, ah, okay, now I need to adapt to that situation. Um, I'm looking at for positive aspects this week. Really, there's not a lot of flow. Okay, this is going to feel a little choppy, a little bit like swimming upstream. There is a lovely connection between the sun and Leo trying to Chiron and Aries. So um, to the extent you can work on healing, particularly your heart 
and um, how you love and, um, and, and devoting time and energy to creative projects. I think that is one way to kind of work with the energy of the week. I'm watching the 17th because Venus in Virgo begins to move into an opposition with Saturn and Pisces. And so there's this push pull between um, what you want and what you, uh, how you get it. Uh, this push pull between um, uh, health matters and uh, kind of insidious uh, health issues that come up from beneath the surface. So that's something to pay attention to. It's a little bit of a tug of war, right? And it will also step into uh, and create a T-square with the Mars and Jupiter in Gemini. So again, 17th, 18th, even a uh, slightly more difficult uh, feeling, uh, difficult angles of energy, a little bit more harshness. So be cautious. On the 18th, Mercury and Leo will step into conjunction with the sun. So when it is close to the sun, the sun can blot out that energy, make it a little bit more wonky, you know, wonky, wonkier, even though it's retrograde. But then there is a moment of empowerment when the sun and Mercury merge. And so look for the insights there, but realize that there might be a lot of issues related to uh, electronics with communication, confusion, misunderstandings, all those types of things this week in particular. That T-square will take us into next week. And so this is very challenging aspects. Um, Venus at 16, Saturn at 17, Jupiter at 17, Mars at 19, anything at these degree points, you are involved in this in a more intimate level. And so that is something to take note of and to be adaptable. All right. So um, as far as the light for the week, I, I'm, it's the Leo Chiron energy. It is good. It is a good time for people to uh, to do the inner work, to really understand the bigger pictures here, and to manage um, some of the the hurts that you've experienced in this lifetime, or even ones that you feel like are residual from other lifetimes. I'm also don't forget we have that lovely connection. It's not exact, but we have a beautiful connection between the three transpersonal planets: Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. There are larger, larger cycles afoot. This is a good time to have a cosmic viewpoint of some of these issues that are arising and understanding that we are in a training period. We are learning new skills that will usher in a new reality over the next few years. But as, um, as the old guard holds on to the old reality, uh, there will be struggles, there will be difficulties. And so it's important to lean into your spiritual practices it's one of those moments, um, and there will be many over these next couple years where it's like, all right, do you really believe some of these philosophical things you've been learning and understanding about life being a school for the soul and resolution of karma and coming to this deeper understanding and that, um, that, that whatever impacts another person impacts you, that we're all connected in this web of life. All of those things are um, lessons that we're learning and understanding and understandings that are important to lean into when things in the outer world seem chaotic. Now, honestly, cling to your practices, your mantra, listening to positive music, uh, making connections with the, with the people that you love and that you care for. Uh, put good energy out into the world and be the change, okay? All right. Well, I, um, I wish you uh, a marvelous week. I um, want you to stay grounded through all this volatility. Watch the mind will be very activated. And trust me, I understand like I'm ha undergoing quite a few major, major life shifts at the moment as well. And I find myself awake at, at two or three in the morning and the mind just instantly hops right on that hamster wheel and <laughs> okay. Ah, and I lean into my breath. That is really the tether that keeps me in the moment and helps me to remember what's important. So um, I hope that you have a marvelous week. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not going to list the shadow. You know what the shadow is this week. All right. <laughs> Namaste, my friends. I'll see you in the tarot portion. Hello, my beautiful friends, and namaste. I'm Jill Loftus of New It Astrology. Let's take a look at the Isis Lotus tarot spread for the week of August the 12th, 2024. Yeah, we things are starting to get a little, little interesting here. 
so Tarot's definitely been telling a story week to week. Um, I'm having to film these back to back because of my own, <laughs> my own chaotic life. So yeah, let's, let's take a look. Reading for the collective. Always like to remind them about that. And if you've not seen this before, this gives us two different ways to work with the energy. Okay. Now, the first card is a pass. So where are we coming from? Nine of Cups. So something happened that made us feel abundant, happy, um, joyful. Yeah, we're, we're starting to realize that our own happiness is kind of a gauge for where we're going. And then there's you, two of pentacles. You just have to stay balanced. Nothing too extreme. Present environment, another card of balance, temperance, which says just slow down. Okay, slow down. Bring together these different things in order to create the new thing. All right, that is part of what we're doing here. And as these things come together, Ten of Pentacles, abundance, wealth, whether it's a wealth of knowledge, information, skills, gifts, talents, come from this place of abundance. And the key card, Page of Wands, so starting something new, the spark of a new idea. Now, the opposing forces in play, well, we've got the Ace of Cups. Yeah, something super emotionally exciting, a brand new beginning. On the other side, we have Judgment. Oh boy, another karmic decision time. So something's coming forward and you are going to have to make a big life decision. Now the near future detail, the chariot. The chariot says, well, now you're ready to go. What are you waiting for? The chariot says, move forward. You are prepared. Don't get distracted. All right, but also collaborate with others. I always think of this as a card of collaboration. Now the modifiers are... On the Ace of Cups side, Five of Swords, don't get too focused or too narrow-minded. So this can be like a card of like unintended consequences because you're so narrowly focused on a goal um, that you don't see the you know forest for the trees. On the Judgment side, Ten of Wands, again, you're being asked to understand how you work with others. Okay, you do not have to do this all by yourself. Why do you keep trying to do that? All right. On the Ace of Cups side, we also have the Two of Swords. You're not seeing something here. Okay. Yeah. You want to, you want to start this new thing. And actually you're already, you've already done a lot of the work, but you know, you're so narrowly focused and you, you know that, but you're trying to pretend that you don't. On the Judgment side, paired with the Ten of Wands, another difficult card, Five of Pentacles. There can be this feeling of being left out, of not in, being included, like you're a stranger in a strange land in some way. So um, this says, yeah, go ahead and, and find your people, find abundance. Again, come from that place of abundance, that Ten of Pentacles, return to that throughout your week. Now, our two possible progressions, well, on the Ace of Cups side, we've got another decision to make, Two of Wands. I tell you what, that's why I feel like people feel like time is speeding up because the karmic repercussions of our decisions come faster. And so therefore, it's like we're planting our garden instead of over a year, we plant gar new gardens every week. Uh, at least that's what it feels like for me. Um, on the judgment side, we've got this Seven of Pentacles, which reminds us to have a long-term view of things. On the Ace of Cups side, paired with the Two of Wands, we have the Fool, which reminds you that you have infinite possibilities. You are infinitely creative, and you need to understand that not everybody's going to get what you're doing, but it's important that you get what you're doing. On the Judgment side, paired with Seven of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. So after all of this, then a practical new beginning commences. So yeah, Page of Wands, we, we want to initiate on the one side, it's something that really emotionally really makes us feel good, okay? You already have a lot of this already started. Don't be too narrow-minded. Don't be self-limiting in your thoughts or mental patterns. Don't let your mind be an obstacle. Make the decision and go towards that which really delights you, okay? Otherwise, we've got this decision that needs to be made, and then we still have to move forward, but we need to work with others. We, we can't take it all on ourselves and we can't let this like, whether it's the, the imposter syndrome that's like, oh, well, you know, I don't know. No one would believe me about this or that. Don't let that become an obstacle. Think long-term goals, long-term desires and start, okay? 
So interesting. The one way it's like you have that idea and you begin it. The other one, you start moving in that direction. It takes you somewhere different, right? But either way, looks like much better week, uh, a much better week than last week. Last week was a little sketch, okay? So um, I wish you the most marvelous week and I'll see you next week. Bye.